difference in the slight advantage of this actually seems to be driven by how good people are before the training. So, and that you get this sort of paradox, but the, the, the paradox that actually turns out to happen like almost all the time, is the people who are already quite good at remembering things are able to remember the demonic strategies. <laughs> <laughs> And, understand, and they're probably also just more intelligent, so they're also able to understand how to use the demonic strategies. And so they benefit from the demonic strategies. The people who weren't so well off at the beginning don't. In fact, if anything, because of all the you know, issues of kind of like overloading a more limited cognitive capacity, they may even get worse. And actually, I I think it's one of the reasons I personally kind of, kind of resonate with this article is I've always had trouble with most demonic strategies because it's blessed with a good memory runs in my family. And I generally find the demonic strategies harder to remember than whatever it was I was trying to remember. <laughs> so like, why would you have to let, do all this stuff just to remember this list? But, um, so you know, you, you're, you're not only having to remember whatever the target memories are, you're having to remember the demonic strategies and you already were, didn't have a very good memory. So, so now you've got like, more problems rather than less. Um, so what they do, I just think it's just a brilliant idea, and, it's, you know, and then even more so because you know, like it worked, is that they said, let people choose their own strategies. And they kind of, so they just you know, they kind of do an introduction with people and they say, you know, you probably know kind of what tends to work for you. So yeah, we want you to do stuff that's more meaningful, but and kind of try to relate to stuff that you already know, but how you choose to make that relationship work for you and how you choose to do the depth of processing thing is your choice and they get much better improvement. Right? The other people do what they want to do. So there's, there's one one more there, so. um, That was an elastic article, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the elastic stuff. Um, is it Sleagle? Hmm? You said Fairy or Sleagle? It's, it's Lustig and Sleagle, but you said I wasn't oh, just one to I'm make just, sure. I'm, no, I'm just I'm, I'm uh, saying the word. Okay. I'm I'm sure. I wasn't slippage. sure if it was somewhere else. Yeah. Nope. Cognitive slippage. It is. <laughs> Bright, bright lights, you know, four, four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> um, so just, just a, some more uh, pieces of advice about what things you might work on with people. Um, encoding, and you know, primarily getting people to really think about even the question of when you think your memory is worse because you're older, or when you think saying, I don't remember X, did you encode it in the first place? And how well did you encode it in the first place? Well, one of the memory groups I did um, quite some years ago in the senior center, this one woman was, you know, kind of outlines not fairly typical problems. She said, she had worked, she, she was retired for quite a few years. She had a dry cleaning business, and she had always prided herself on her ability to you know, remember people's names. And what she was concerned about is she had noticed that now as a retired older person, when she met new people, she didn't remember their names the way that she used to. So I said, what did you do back in the days you know, when you were in business and you met, you, you met a new customer? What did you do to remember their name? And she, and she did this whole, it's again, something that's fairly common as a mnemonic strategy. She would pick out some facial feature that was kind of unique, and she'd try to figure out some way to associate her name with that facial feature. And, um, and she would rehearse it for a while, you know, after they left. And they said, Brilliant psychologist. Thing. <laughs> so that, now, now, that, now you meet new people. Do you do that? No, I don't do that. I'm retired now. <laughs> 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 well, you know, you say you're, you're not. It's not. You're not forgetting stuff. You're not encoding. And um, 
I actually like a lot of people that, that I've had these kind of discussions with in memory classes and memory discussion groups with normally aging people. Um, she didn't really want to. But she felt a lot better knowing that, you know, she wasn't, her mind wasn't turning to much because she was getting older or she wasn't on the way to developing Alzheimer's disease. But she wasn't really working with the encoding process. Um, it's actually, you know, in these groups, I've found a, a fairly common response when you really get into talking with people about you know, what could you do to remember things better. Not everybody, but probably at least half the people in the group, sometimes quite a bit more than half, are like, no thank you. <laughs> you know, I'd much rather take it easy and, 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 not, and not work with this. Which is fine, and, and I think you're like, like, again, you're making that connection that my memory actually isn't getting worse, I'm just, I'm not working at things anymore. And that's a decision that I'm making. That, that I, don't, I, don't have to, I don't have to remember things anymore, I don't want to work out the way that I used to work out. Um, and it's, it's just, it's generally a good strategy for talking to people, you know, uh, what it seems like their memory loss, maybe in the normal aging range, is to kind of think back, both to try to get people to think about whether they really are forgetting more than they used to. Uh, Steve Zaret used to say uh, that, uh, that what, old, what older people forget is how much they used to forget. <laughs> it th doesn't explain all the differences. There actually are diary studies that show that uh, if you have younger people and older people keep track of their forgetting during the week, there is a um, some increase in forgetting the normal aging uh, in older people, but um, but people tend to overestimate it uh, because we focus so much on the possibility of dementia and we think about forgetfulness of being associated with age as such part of our lore. But, you know, you may be having the same problems that you've had all your life, and now you say it's aging. And she's actually gotten a little better in the last decade or so, but my, my wife has lost her car keys ever in her glasses uh, ever since we met. And I've told her at times that if I ever write my autobiography, I'm going to call it the search for Patty's glasses. <laughs> But actually, I think, uh, if anything, she's, she's, she does it somewhat less now than she did uh, 20 years ago when we met. But, um, but because we're older now, you know, when it happens, she does something. So, well, it must be because I'm getting older. <laughs> if anything, you do it less now than you did 20 years ago. Um, and it's, it's kind of hard not to fall into that stuff. And actually, the whole judgment about how good is my memory compared to what it is was 10, 20 years ago, is, is a tricky judgment to make. I, I mean, I think about this a lot as I'm moving into the young old years and, um, you know, the joke about maybe it's early Alzheimer's disease isn't nearly as funny as it was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's, I'm not in a real high age group, but I'm also in an age group where it becomes appreciably different from zero. Um, and you, you try to think back and go, did this happen to me like you know, 20 years ago? I don't remember that either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think it did. Does it happen more now? I'm not so sure. You know, so, you know, these kind of judgments are actually pretty different, difficult to make. Um, so what can you do? Basically, at encoding, there's the depth of processing thing that we've been talking about. Uh, far and away, the best thing is to, is to you know, really think about what, what it means to you, what's important to you, and how it connects with other stuff that you know. You know, failing that, <clears throat> if you're really not very interested, but you do need to remember it later for some reason or another, uh, as Father Guido Sarducci was saying, a repetition. <laughs> Rehearsal is what, you know, gets you from, from one place to the other. And so the, the other memory model here, uh, one of the main things that gets you from working memory into, into long-term memory is rehearsal. And elaboration is another way 